Hello and welcome to this partner series webinar, uh, Getting Started, um, Getting Parents Engaged in Homework Using Microsoft Teams and Haldor Homework. And uh, we've got uh, our guests from Haldor on the call today. Um, we've got Emma, the Chief Marketing Officer. Hi Emma. Hi Emma, how are you? Hi Emma, good thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. And uh, we've got your colleague uh, Yale, um, Head of Product Development. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, yeah, good, thank you. And uh, we've also got Darren, uh, our Operations Manager and former MFL teacher. Hi, Darren. Morning, Tony, you're right. Good, thanks. And um, so what the, the, the way we're going to do things today is have a quick introduction to each company. So we're going to start off with an introduction to our design box. Um, then we're going to have an introduction to Haldor, find out the interesting things that Haldor are doing uh, with Microsoft Teams. And then we're going to jump into a demo of each product. So today's focus is going to be on the parental engagement side of things inside Microsoft Teams. So we'll take a look at what you can do out of the box with SDS and Cloud Design Box. And then we'll also have a look at the layer that Haldor Homework adds on top. And we'll come back at the end with any questions and answers that you, uh, that you might have. So if you do have a question for us, uh, you should see a speech bubble in the top right. Uh, feel free to click that at any point during the presentation. Uh, type in your questions. Um, we've got uh, Joanne who's looking at those as we go through. And if, if we can answer any as we go along, we will do. Otherwise, we'll come back to them at the end and answer any questions that you might have. So feel free to enter your questions in there. They can be about anything um, today. So um, just a bit about Cloud Design Box. Uh, so we're a team of education, teams and SharePoint experts. We support over 360 schools in the UK and also internationally, um, but we specialise in education. So we work with uh, schools all the way through from primary school to secondary to colleges uh, to multi-academy trusts, um, but we specialise in education technology. And the sort of things that we do at Cloud Design Box to try and help you with Teams is we try and help you save teach time. So we create some centralized resource areas. So you've got one version of the truth and you can use it with all the different classes that you teach every academic year. So it's all about reusing those resources and hopefully saving teach time along the way, but also saving department leader time. So um, department leaders can't always see the quality of those resources that other teachers in their departments are using. So again, we create those centralized resource areas so you can do that centrally and provide you with, the, with some analytics so you can make sure that you know, work's been set in each class in that department. And we also build a SharePoint intranet to improve communication um, across, across the school or across the multi-academy trust. And that's a place where you can publish resources to wide audiences across the school. And we try and make it as easy to use as possible. So we've got an easy to use class dashboard to jump straight from your intranet into those Microsoft Teams. That's that's the thing with Office 365, Tony, isn't it? There's lots of great things in there, different tools, different features, but they're quite disparate. And we, we try and bring them together and, uh, and make it hold together and make it easy to use. Yeah, I think as an end user, it can be uh, quite quite daunting when you've got all these different apps. So um, by having that intranet, that place to go, that place that opens up when you open up a browser or we can add it as an app inside Teams, you can just get access to everything from one place. So just trying to make it as easy as possible to use. And uh, the other the other side of this is, uh, you know, getting good user adoption over the long term. So making sure you've got that clear uh, long term strategy. And that's something we can talk to you about. Um, this will probably be part of your wider digital strategy where you might have devices as well, um, but we can definitely help you with uh, the Teams and SharePoint rollout. We've got some CPD certified courses um, that your staff can go on so they can get their Microsoft Innovative Educator badges, they can get their CPD certificates and there's some hands on training sessions that we provide as part of our um, Microsoft uh, education training provider. Um, we've also uh, got obviously the, the, the costs and efficiency savings of automating all of this. So everything we see today is automated from your information management system. So if you're in the UK, you might use something like SIMS or ISAMS or Arbor. 
um, internationally, you might use something like PowerSchool, but you've already got that data in one place. So again, we can automate the creation of the teams. We can update them automatically overnight. And in particular, we can pull the parents and guardian details into this as well so that they can get uh, all the features we're going to go through today. And then um, the stuff that we will have a quick look at uh, today as well is the uh, the, t the Teams parental interaction. So um, in terms of powering both the what you get out of the box and also how do our homework, we use something called Microsoft School Data Sync. And this is Microsoft's standard way of doing things um, in the cloud. So what we do is we pull the parent and guardian details from your MIS, whatever MIS that is, push it to Microsoft, and then you can use those guardian details across both the Haldor product, but also using some of the out of the box stuff that we'll look at today as well. And by putting that data into Microsoft, it means out of the box, you can set up a weekly email digest so parents get a quick email each week. They can see what their child's done in terms of if they've turned in their work or not, and also what work is coming up next week. So it's a nice overview for parents. Um, but if you have been um, if you have been using other products in the past uh, to publish homework to parents, you might find that this maybe isn't enough uh, quite yet. Yeah, so it's just it's just once a week, isn't it, Tony? It's it's not. It's if if you're a parent that that wants to keep checking every single day, you know, what homework should your child be doing? What should they be handing in? Did they hand it in? Then you need something. Um, more than this. This is a good start, but um, a lot of schools now are finding they need to take it to the next level with the parents, especially since Teams and Teams assignments is such a massive thing now and so much homework and classwork is being um, handed out and marked uh, using Teams as well. Yeah, and I guess one, one thing they can't do in this as well is they can't see the grades that the teacher's given them. They yeah. can't see any any comments or feedback and they can't see those rubrics which teachers might be using which are really powerful you know a transparent way of marking the work yeah and they can't see the resources themselves either so if, if a teacher's pushed out a powerpoint um as a parent you don't know what's in that so so you might know that your, your child was meant to, to do a certain piece of work and you know what the title is but you don't know actually slide by slide what was the work they were supposed to hand in yeah, so I think it's a good start. It, it does what you know what Google does in terms of the uh, weekly email digest, um, but it doesn't you know give give parents maybe that's experience that they're used to having, especially in the UK where we've had you know parental homework systems in place for a long time. So um, what we're going to show today with Haldor is what you can do to build on top of that. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, Haldor to give you a bit of an introduction to um what they do in terms of building on top of teams um with the parental solution so over to you uh, emma yeah thank you you see my screen yeah that's working for us perfect well, OK, so a bit about Haldor. Uh, we're an international ed tech company. Uh, we were actually the first company in the world to develop uh, tools, educational tools that were seamlessly integrated into Microsoft Teams. So we, we do want to make um, Teams well, sort of one stop shop where teachers, schools, students, parents, they can do everything in Teams. Uh, so we extend the functionality of Teams with you know everything they need, teachers, students, school leaders, parents. Um, we develop tools, uh, for example, lesson planning tools, assessment, possibility to take attendance, to see timetables to, and what we're talking about today to communicate with parents. Uh, so that's that's tools, worth saying, actually, I think, and Emma, isn't it, that today what we're talking about is how to homework because it's a very yes, specific thing. Exactly. It's, it's where yeah. parents meet teams assignments and, and see what's happening. But you guys mm. also do a whole other load of stuff. And obviously we'd encourage yes. people to go look at that as well. Exactly. That's something you can find on our, on our website or just reach out to us and we'll talk about that. Uh, but as we've seen now during the pandemic, as you've talked about as well, uh, the, the parental support needed uh, students that students need now is a bit a bit higher. Uh, they need uh, parents want to be more engaged. They want to support their their, their child, 
uh, and this is what Haldra homework uh, does. But as I said, uh, we do have more uh, tools and uh, you can read more about that on our web page. Um, okay, so Haldra homework then. Um, this is an app uh, that people can, or their parents can uh, use either on the, uh, the, in the browser or they can use it on the tablet or on the phone. It allows parents to just log in whenever they want and to keep track of all of these the assignments that uh, that uh, teachers set in Teams. So all Teams assignments, parents can see them. They can see the resources, they can see the, any feedback or rubrics, uh, and then in that way so be able to support their child better, uh, support them and be engaged in their their learning. What's actually really good for schools uh, is that there's no really no real setup needed and in that in that uh, mean that in terms of teachers just keep working as they usually do. They work in teams and they work with teams assignments. What we do is that we show teams assignments to uh, to parents and any feedback and assessment uh, made. Um, that, that's, get... that, that's a really good point, Emma, isn't it? Because um, in previous systems, teachers might have had to put the homework in two places. So put it on Teams, yeah. then put it in the parental homework system. Here, what, I'm, I'm guessing what you're saying is they just do it in Teams and parents can yeah. see it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and they don't, I mean, sometimes if you get by tools and services, uh, you you have to, you know, say that teachers have to, teachers have to work in this way or that way. And uh, But they, they just keep working with team assignments and they just we just show them to parents. So they get full insight parents into their teams, uh, their child's team assignments and schools can get the statistics to see how parents are using it as well. And uh, in terms of that setup and the transition, the, the chances are most of the schools that, that, that may be watching this webinar are already using class teams because they got used to doing that during the pandemic. Yeah. Many, many of those will also be used to using assignments. The only gap is parents can't see what's happening teachers can students can but the parents can't and this exactly. is that gap isn't it yeah exactly we've we've been told because we've got contact with lots of schools and and parents in in england uh and we know that parents nowadays well sometimes anyway uh use their child's team's account to log in just see what what assignments they've got uh and in this way they don't have to they can do that whenever they want and from whatever device they Abs they'd like absolutely and i've seen yeah. some other crazy stuff as well i've seen, I've seen teachers inviting parents into teams into class teams as guests <laughs> which is not a great idea because of course no. they can then see everything about all the, the children so this is a much safer way of doing that exactly exactly they just see what they're supposed to see really and which is really good as well is that we've got the Microsoft uh, Immersive Reader. This is one of the things that we're really proud of because for us availability and accessibility, uh, no matter what, if you're able to, um, if you've got uh, another mother, uh, mother tongue or if you've got another language, or if you have a hard time reading, for example, if you've got any uh, kind of uh, dyslexia or anything, Microsoft Immersive Reader helps uh, students and now it's also available for parents. So teachers, for example, can write an assignment in, in English and then perhaps a, a, a Swedish teach, a Swedish parent comes in and wants to see what their student has, what the student assignment is. And they can just translate that and have that read aloud or uh, in help in that kind of way. So for it, us, it's an amazing thing, immersive reader. We, we, we've done amazing. some videos on that, on that previously, you know, in, in kind of well, OneNote and in, in SharePoint mm. and Teams, doing those kind of things, translating. As you say, it's it's great for um, uh, students uh, with, uh, you know, for example, dyslexia or visual impairments. Um, and if you've got children for whom English is not their main language, they can get help as well if if the language of that is English. And and as you say, you can you, you can actually go completely international on it as well. Yeah, exactly. Which is really good now that you know parents from different countries need it, need to use it. So it's really good. We're really proud of that uh, uh, integration. And I think uh, my colleague will show that to you a bit later in the demo. Uh, as I said, we uh, do have uh, schools and parents using Haldra Homework in, in uh, England. We've got 22 countries, we've got our apps in 22 countries from primary to, to, up to university. Um, but this is one of the um, quotes that we got from, from uh, one of the uh, senior leaders at Blue Coat School, which is quite good. And I think that demonstrates uh, well how uh, how actually how the homework works and the benefits that you get from it as a school. So I'm just going to leave it at that and then let you take over again, Tony. 
Great, thanks, Emma. That's really interesting. So um, I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see that now. Um, so yeah, we're we'll going to start off by doing a demo inside Teams um, just to show you sort of what you get out of the box and uh, and also what we as Cloud Design Box can help you automate, uh, including feeding the parents in. And then we'll pass back over to Haldor to see how you can add Haldor on top of this. So just to let you know what, what we do as a company is we automate all of the class teams from your MIS system. So um, a typical secondary school might have 1200 class teams and they might have uh, you know changes on a regular basis as students move up, up and down sets, as new students join the school. And again, we can automate all of that for you. What we do on top of that is add an extra layer. So um, in addition to creating the class teams, we also create a SharePoint intranet for the whole school, um, which is a place where you can publish resources to wide audiences across the school, but also have some secure collaboration spaces. And really this is a replacement for some of those staff and student shared drives that you might have in school, helping you with that journey, move into the cloud. Um, but where it becomes um, really innovative is where we create the uh, subject sites. So we create we can create subject and department sites automatically from that pure class data. So if you have any English classes in school, we created a centralized English subject team. And one thing you might have noticed if you have been using Teams uh, for a while now, obviously since pandemic, uh, a lot of schools have picked this up and carried on using it long term. Um, so one of the main issues that a lot of teachers bring up is they teach, you know, several different, for example, English classes every academic year and uploading your resources over and over again to all those different classes is very time consuming but it also means you've got a different quality of resource in each of those class teams nobody can keep track of the quality of it um, and you're having to duplicate your workload over and over again every academic year because at the end of the academic year those classes become archived off and you get new ones created for the new academic year so what we do is we create some centralized subject resource areas and again these are all automated and security trim so you can only see the subjects that you're enrolled on or that you teach so for example if i teach english classes i'm going to have access to the centralized english resource area and in here there's some areas that are staff only that only staff can access and then some student facing resources that students can see but they can't edit so it's a place where you can centralize those resources. So I've got some staff resource areas, but I've also got some student facing resource areas as well. And this is somewhere where you can store your documents and you can reuse them with all the classes you teach every academic year. And I'll show you very shortly how those link into these class teams as well. And in terms of your class teams, one of the issues is they become archived off at the end of the academic year. There might be some um, mark books or some resources you do want to grab out of one of those uh, historic class teams from a previous academic year that that can be quite difficult to do um, if you're in teams because they, they they get hidden once they're archived so what we do is we create a little time machine option in here and i can quickly jump back to a previous academic year and jump into those teams if i need to and if i jump into one of those ones from this year i can see all the students in it again the photo from the mis and i can jump straight into that class team straight into the relevant area within that class team so i'll just jump into uh, teams here for this particular class of my english 3 and you can see that we automatically add on a tab to those centralized resources inside every single english class every single academic year so the idea is as a teacher you put resources in one place your head of department can keep track of the quality of them but you can reuse them with all the different classes you teach every academic year so it's one version of the truth so that combination then tony the fact we've got centralized resources which means you don't need to put resources in every class team and move your files around all the time and combine that with the fact that it's actually really easy to go back in time to find student work from previous years, whether that's in the notebook or the student work folders that we make or assignments. That combination means it's not a problem that your classes end at the end of, uh, of every year and get archived. Um, you certainly don't need to try and make classes last for two years or three years because that's why I've seen schools getting very, very confused when they've tried to create their own 
class teams and you end up with you know the wrong students in the wrong class and people get stripped out whereas this is very straightforward it's very robust and it, it just works so the, the other benefits as well of that automation is we can bring in the parent and guardian details um, so they're brought in in the background into Microsoft School Data Sync, and there's an option inside Teams to turn on weekly email digest, and that will give the parents an email digest of any assignments that have been set uh, to their children, um, and if they've turned it in on time or not. So have they completed the assignments and returned it back to the teacher? And also it will give them a summary of what's coming up next week. So it's that basic summary that we saw in the screenshot earlier. Now there is another option now that Microsoft have released, um, which is a parent communication feature. Um, you may find that this isn't quite what you what you need at the moment if you use UK MIS system. This is a place where you can see all the uh, the parents, and I could message the parents if I needed to um, have a chat with them, um, and that's okay. But I know a lot of schools already have systems in place for that, either built into the MIS or the buying products. And those products probably have a few more advanced features such as, you know, safeguarding features and policies built into it. So this is very basic at the moment, but we think that Microsoft will build on this over time and you'll get, you know, more features in here to be able to chat with parents in the free version of Teams. Um, but that's that, that's what's available currently out of the box uh, with with Microsoft and the, the sync. Um, and when it comes to setting your assignments inside Teams, that's something that will then um, turn up inside Haldor. So all the teacher has to do is go in and create a new assignment as they normally would. And if you've not used Teams assignments yet, this is what it looks like. I can create a title for this. It could be of Mice and Men homework. Give them some instructions, you know, please complete the worksheet. Attach a worksheet so I can attach a document from anywhere and if you are using the centralized resource series that we've created it means that you can just grab that really quickly and easily from that central team so i can grab uh, you know year 11 of my cement worksheet and, and that's the... really important isn't it because otherwise teachers might have their resources in their one drive and and want to uh, create the assignments from them but of course that's creating a silo in the one drives teachers might have stuff in in their their t drive or that their, their own my documents and they're uploading from there every time but you lose the sense of quality driven by the head of department because with this approach the assignments all come from centralized resources which means the head of department has confidence that those are quality resources Sh sharing is caring yeah sharing you know. is caring um so I can let the students complete their own copy of this. Um, so if you did want to hand out a worksheet, get them to fill it and return it back again, you can do. Um, and I can also uh, assign some marks for this. So it might be out of 100 if it's maybe a percentage. Um, but one really powerful feature is the ability to add rubrics here. So we won't go through this in detail today because we've got some other videos on that. But it does mean that you can set up those uh, grading grids uh, marking criteria for the for that for that particular piece of work and the nice thing about this is it's transparent for students and for teachers and with Haldor it's also transparent for parents as well so um, we can show an example of that um, in the Haldor session so you can assign that to your students and that's done once I don't need to do it in another place or another app um, for the parents to see this all feeds live from the from the assignments so I'm now going to hand back over to Haldor for the demo of what you see, uh, what the parent sees in the in the uh, Haldor app. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so I'll share my screen as well. And actually start where Tony left off. <clears throat> so I'll start in Teams, logged in as a teacher. And I have my algebra team where we have some assignments. And as Tony said, I've created an assignment where you can have the, an instruction for your students. And you can also have reference materials. Uh, you can have documents that you share with, with your students that they can edit as well. Uh, and you have points uh, available. If I go into the edit view, I can see that I have the points I can 
change that if I if I want to, and I can also add a rubric. I'll actually go into another assignment as well. Let's see how the rubrics are on this assignment. So this is an assignment where we have added rubrics already. And this will be available for for parents as well. So I'm going to log in as a parent for Douglas. And as you can see, I have marked Douglas already. And I can have a look at that as a teacher. I can see how I have assessed him on the rubric. And I've also added some feedback on some, some of the, the rubric parts. So let's have a look at the parent application. So the parent application is a web application. It's also available as a, a, a mobile application for uh, both uh, Android and iPhone. Uh, and will show basically the same information. <clears throat> so the Handler homework part are uh, part of the parental engagement platform that we have. Uh, and it's showing only the parts that are active. And right now the assignments part are the only one active. I'm logged in as Kara and I have Douglas as my son. And if I've had more children, I would be able to change between those children here. So you don't have to log in separately for all children. All right, so <laughs> one of the assignments that we had a look at in Teams was the mind map uh, assignment in the algebra team. And as a parent, I have the basically the same view that, that my kid has. Uh, just in a separate web application. I can see the information in the assignment and I can also have a look at the documents that are attached to the, the assignment. Uh, if I click on this one, I have it downloaded and I can open it on the computer. So that's that's that missing gap, isn't it? Because if, if you're just using the built in Microsoft, um, the email digest, the one you get yeah. on a on a Sunday morning, um, you don't get the richness of this because what you showed us here, Yole, is the teacher side where you go in and you create the assignment, and then you might mark the assignment, and of course the student does the work um, at some point. Um, the parent really gets to see most of that. They, they get to yeah. see the title, the description, and they can even see the files that have been included in that assignment. So rather than the parent having to just look at the title and say, oh, well, that kind of oh, colouring in brilliant. They, they actually look at the, the, the document that's been sent out, whether that's a PowerPoint or a Word document or, or a, a small video or a picture, some kind of yeah. stimulus for the learner. Um, and they can actually see the, the work the students can do. They, they, they can't do it on behalf of their kids. That would be wrong, but exactly. they can see yes. everything. And then what they do, right? They, they grab them at the dinner table, don't they? Or they grab them as they're walking past, you know, or the, on, on the way yep. to the PS4. And, and, and they say, you know, how's that homework going? And they can have a proper conversation about it with, with their children. Exactly, yeah. And as Emma said as well, we have the Immersive Reader, so the parents can open Immersive Reader here as well. And uh, if they like, they can also translate the assignment description to the, and read it out loud on, on that language as well. So they, they have that support as well in, in the assignments. Uh, if we go back to the home page, so these are the assignments that the kids are working on right now. And we also have the completed uh, assignments. And uh, I'm going to show one assignment where we have only points. So the, the, this is marked with points only and with feedback. So we still have the information about the assignment. We also have the, the documents attached and we see the assessment that the teacher has done for, for this assignment. So that's the this is the um, simple part of the uh, assessment on an on assignment. And then we have the more advanced one with rubrics as well. So let's go into this one where we can see also the same information about the assignment, but we can also see how the teacher has marked the student on this assignment with rubrics. And we also see that you have a feedback on the entire assignment and you have feedback on the 
say this the single uh, parts of the rubrics as well as i showed you in in the parent or in the teacher so that, that's really another reason to make the rubric. I mean, we love rubrics anyway, because even if it's just between teachers and students, the rubric is a really easy way to tell the students what success looks like. You know, if, if you if you want to get an A for this or a B or a C, you know, if you want to get the next level, then it's basically saying this is what a good answer will look like. It, it needs to have this level of good spelling and grammar. You need to be, you know, doing a certain amount of research and that feeds in. And of course, all that that sharing of what success looks like also feeds through through Howdor uh, to the parents as well, because otherwise sometimes as a parent, you might look at a, at a piece of work and you go, well, OK, I see the title and yeah, you know, I, I've 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 actually read the worksheet, but it, it doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I, I, I gave up physics, you know, I, I, I never did it to this level, so but at least if they can yeah. see the rubric, they've got a conceptual idea as a parent uh, of what their child needs to do, and they can see what their child actually got in the finished marked work, and they can look at it and go, well, um, so how come how come you only got like the second one there? Why why isn't it why isn't it well developed? Why you know why 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 is your work only developed and 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 why isn't it well developed? And they can have that conversation with their child and then the child will explain, oh, well, you know, it's because I didn't have enough time because, you know, I went out uh, or, or whatever it was, or I've got too much work because, you know, this, this is this is science work. But, you know, they scheduled the English homework the same day and then the parent can have a, a, a nice and genuine conversation with the school maybe to say, oh, um, looks like there could be a problem here with 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 homeworks clashing and my, my son hasn't got enough time to do it and it starts a conversation. Yeah. yeah, so th that's one of the other functionality that we have. Um, Microsoft is, of course, doing the possibility, having the possibility to chat with parents as well. We also have that, but we have that directly in the assignment. So the if we turn that on, the, the service that we have for communication with parents, or uh, you, you as a parent can communicate in the assignment so that the teacher know that okay so this is i want to talk about this assignment and not a general discussion about something yeah, yeah that's great and, and of course that that's a school choice that's not on by yeah, default yeah. and i, I believe course, that, yeah. that'll be an extra um an extra cost i think is it is that right for that that feature uh to, yeah could be yeah. And then that's what we were saying earlier with, with Emma. You know, there's the, there's a bigger product here. This this is the homework exactly. part, but there's yeah, a lot is. of other things you can do with with Howdor as well. And of course, you know, once once you've got this embedded, you'll probably want to have a look around and and, and see what other stuff they do as well. Uh, Yale, um I know that um, we've obviously been um, using this with some schools now in 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 uh, the UK. Um, one of the requested features, which I know that you've been working on, is the ability for schools to see um if parents have actually logged in and viewed it because i think one thing that is difficult for schools to measure is you know we create these parents portals and uh, you know ways for, to communicate with them but are parents actually engaging and is that something that you've uh, developed recently yeah so we have a power bi solution where we uh, uh, visualize the data for um, how parents are using the application as well so this is only uh, our demo system, so there is not a lot of parents in the system, but it shows uh, how many parents have been logged in and how many logins that have been done in each month. Or actually you can choose to do um, or uh, have this expanded to a lower level of uh, you can have each date here as well if you want to have a look at that. But uh, the most parts we want to have it per month, I get, I would guess. Yeah, it would be interesting so see. to see how it changes over holidays. You know, are parents still yeah. checking during the, the school holidays to make because the, you know, the, the kids might have been given some work to do. So just being able to zoom in and zoom out is you know, it's a, a useful exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, and, and we're going to add uh, a date filter here as well. So you can have a, a more look at if you want to have a look at May, for example, uh, how is it? How are we doing throughout the month of May? You can do that as well. And so that's something that we are implementing right now. 
Awesome. Will, will it be possible at some stage? Sorry to throw development requests at you, Yolo. Yes. Will, will it be possible at some stage to for for the school to to zoom in on a particular parent, where you know they may have some concerns about that parent or the the the, the children of that parent, and they think we need to keep an eye on on this parent in particular and and just check on them. Yeah. So what we have right now is a page where we have the user ID of each parent, mm -hmm. but we could also have the names of the parents, of course, uh, and we can have a look at how do do each of these parents, do they ha have they been logged in on and which dates have they been logged in as well? So That's right now it's, it's months here as well, but I can have a, I can drill down to days here as well. So and there up, we are. So, so you, we, we can see the direction of travel there with that particular development, yeah. that particular feature, and we, we know you're really quick at getting stuff done actually because yeah um, so this is what, what, yeah the reason for having user id here is just because we want to have it anonymized but we can have uh, real names of the parents as well if if the yeah. customers want that uh, we also have a map if that's so interest so we can see where do we have most engagement in in the country or which yeah. cities or uh, places do we have uh, most parents using the system can also have a look at what part of the day are the parents logged in. That's great because I'm, I'm thinking about trust. Obviously, a single school, there won't be a massive surprise if parents from the town where the school is log in. Um, you might get a surprise if somebody logs in from Malaysia or they're, they're, they're yeah. on hol holiday in Tenerife. You think, oh, look at that. Um, but you know, if, if you're working within a large um, multi academy trust, actually that might be quite useful because some some of the trusts are geographically separate you know you might have uh for example some schools down in the south of england and some others up uh, uh, up north um and it is quite useful in that case to see that kind of map in terms of uh, parents signing up for it um i think this is really easy because you know from experience working in schools in the past the parents really struggle to sign up to new services and it can create a lot of work for the school um, advising parents on which way to use it you know use the wrong browser or the app or whatever um, with this they're basically logging in or creating an account with their email address that the school has on record so the Thanks. parent gets an email uh, from the school uh, with details to, to to sign up and they sign up with the with the email address that that email has been sent to so they don't have to register, they don't have to create a Microsoft um, Xbox account or Hotmail account like they might have to do with other Microsoft services. They can literally just put a password in and, and go. Yeah, they just uh, request a new password with their, uh, the email address that they have registered at the school. So that's yeah. And if they so forget their password, because they, they will. Yeah, they can just request a new password. That's right. So basically the school doesn't have to do any work. That's crucial because exactly. if, if you were as a school trying to and I've done it in the past with projects where we you know created accounts for parents and gave them access to VLEs and things and it's a nightmare because the parents forget their passwords and then they're calling the school. Um, this is simple because we create the parent identities if you like because we, we we do that through our processes and then there's this kind of just sort of it's almost kind of a mail merge isn't it to, to send the to send the link out to parents and invite them to 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 log in and, and start using. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, yeah. could you take that again? Oh, sorry, yeah. it's, it's, it's just just a mail merge. So the the process for for contacting parents with this is the school just does a very simple kind of one off process that basically sends an email to all the contacts yeah, in, exactly. in, 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 yeah. in, in in the address book, if exactly. you like, for parents and yeah, very yeah. simple. So, yeah, so we have really uh, we have had a question come in, which I think is a really good one. Actually, um, I'm not sure if it's available now or maybe for future development. But uh, can you categorise the assignments so parents can filter between classwork and homework? Because in Teams assignments, you can sometimes add tags to work, so you might tag something as a homework assignment or end of term test or just general classwork. Is it possible for parents to see? those categories yes so not today uh, we are looking into being able to use the tagging and different types of information in the assignments for both for showing to parents but also for maybe the the teachers doesn't want to show all the assignments for for parents 
So they want to make them invisible, some of them. Uh, and also maybe they would like to have the um, the result of the student work available for parents as well for some assignments and also maybe not show the results and so on. So that's something that we are looking into uh, being able to do and we are currently we don't exactly know if we should be um, having the Halder education UI available for teachers or if we could solve it in the assignment uh, view, uh, the team's assignment view. Yeah. So and, yeah. and that's why you, you're working with the, 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 the so, so some of, we've got some joint customers and and you're working with those and, and you're okay. having those conversations with them at the moment, which which is great to see. It's great to see that that communication happening because that's obviously um, taking uh, real kind of teaching and learning questions and that's feeding yeah. into what you're developing. You're not kind of making something that nobody wants. You're, you're very much developing exactly. in the direction um, of, of the education. You know, you're, 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 your plants heading towards the sun, you know. And, and we also have to develop a functionality that uh, is possible to turn on and off because one school may want to show tags for parents, another school would possibly not want to show them for parents. So Absolutely. they may be using tags already for some kind of internal system or anything and doesn't want yeah, to show Yeah, yeah, the, the, so. the, the, the kind of category in the tags, they get used for different things. You, you'll find some some schools will say, well, well, we'll tag it as either homework or classwork or project work, and that's that's great. That's one way of doing it. Others actually use those, those kind of tags for different topics. So, you know, you you, you might be doing, I don't know, Tudor revolution in government, and that's one topic, and the fall of the Weimar Republic is another topic, and you, you, you use the tags for, for that purpose. And obviously in that case, you, you wouldn't be able to do the homework versus classwork thing because you've got to have the data to, to do that, right? Um, so it very much depends on how the school has chosen to use the, the, the team's assignments, the, 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 yeah. the filters that you can put on. Yeah, so there is a big, uh possibility that we have to have the Halder Education UI available for teacher or for admins at least so they can say okay so we want to show the tags or the tagging system to parents as well um, but another customer wants to turn that off and even yeah. that's the same thing for files and results from from students as well yeah yeah it's always easier to turn things off than turn things on right so yeah not a problem Right. Um, well, I thought I'd, I'd uh, just help us finish up by showing um, it's in a Cloud Design Box environment as well. Just if you have already got um, Cloud Design Box automating uh, your teams, then this is the sort of thing that um, it would look like. So I can create assignments inside Teams, but then I've just logged in as the parents of one of those students and I can see all the overdue assignments all the assigned work that's currently in progress and all the completed assignments as well and just jumping into one of those um, again this is just um, you know out of the box teams that teachers use I can see the creativity and the spelling of grammar as part of that rubrics for that particular assignment and obviously I've got all the immersive reader features in there as well um, now this is a a, a single child um, that I'm a parent of Obviously, if I had multiple children here, I could switch between them, uh, between the different views. So as a parent, I can see uh, the sort of the full transparency of everything. Um, so I thought I'd open it up to questions at the end. So if you have any questions for uh, for Haldor or for Cloud Design Box, please feel free to post them in the question and answer uh, box in the, the top right. And we will we'll try our best to answer them today. And while we're waiting for that, I'll just share Haldor's contact details. So if you did want to get in touch with Haldor, um, the website is on there, haldoredu.com. And also the email address, sales at haldor.se. I tell you what, Tony, that, that's a free two month trial, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's a bit of a no brainer, I think. Um, give it a go, try it out. Um, in terms of uh, obviously if we're working uh, with you as a school, we can control which parents are, are getting pushed up in into the, the, the SDS area. So if you wanted to kind of do a smaller trial, we could just push 
a smaller number of parents up and then it would be a little bit more more controlled for you um, and actually even if we push all the parents up for you already um you can just send the welcome email just to the parents that you want to trial how do with so it, it could just be uh, you know a teacher and um, that also as a student at the school um or it could be some some friendly parents you know who you're going to test it with and um, before you release it to everybody or you could just go for it and release it to all parents if you've got plenty of teams assignments in there for them to see that's right you could try it out with you know school governors trustees uh the parents friends association th those folks would be into this kind of thing i'll just can i just jump in there tony and, and yeah. darren just say that we know that many schools or some schools want to try for a term and i mean the term is about probably usually two months longer than two months right so we'll i mean we'll sort that out if you want to try it for a term then just get in contact and we'll sort it out that's great thanks right. Emma. It's, it's 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 one of the it's it's like um i'm trying not to name the name of the particular packet of crisps in question but once you open the jar you can't stop exactly uh, and, and it's like that um, so if you want to get in contact with us as well, um, our contact details are on here at Cloud Design Box. So you can contact us through the website, cloudsignbox.co.uk, email address info at cloudsignbox.co.uk, or you can give us a call. Uh, we've got Joanne on the phone today um, on, on the number there. And if you have a camera phone, you can point your camera at any of these QR codes and it will take you to lots of useful guides and information and tips. So. Um, our Twitter page, we're regularly posting on there. Our monthly newsletter, definitely recommend that. We'll send uh, a monthly summary of all the latest features in Teams, interviews with teachers, senior leaders. So even if you don't have any of our products, then it's still a really good, useful resource. Same with the YouTube channel. Again, lots of uh, useful videos on there as well. And we've got a, a Facebook group for educators where you can, uh, again, share best practices in a, in a closed group there as well. So I think um, that's it for the questions. I don't think we've had any, any more in. Um, but if you do think of anything, uh, get in touch with either us or Haldor. We can uh, we can help you out uh, and answer those. Um, and thank you everybody for uh, for taking part today. Thanks, Emma and Yale from Haldor. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank, thank you, you, Darren. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Darren, for for joining me today. Um, and thank you everybody for for attending and uh, if if any of your colleagues want to see this uh, we'll be sending out a recording making this recording available uh, as well so thanks everyone thank you bye bye thank you. bye bye